Welcome back, Juanitosville. Have you ever taken your girlfriend out for an evening swim in the river so she thinks you're romantic, but uh, you don't know how to swim? <laughs> oh, yeah, awkward. But we are not awkward here because we have floaties and a snorkel, and we're going to make it happen all day, friends. So today's episode is discussing working around these sharp edges with uh, bezel, bezel wire. Now, when it's thin bezel wire, it's pretty easy because the bezel wire is so malleable. It's fine silver, so it's very soft, and uh, you can easily get around a corner such as this. Now, this is, I believe, uh, 28 gauge bezel wire, and if that's on there like that, you can easily work with that, and you can get that to bend over just enough on the corner so that it gets a good hug around the stone, and you're always looking at the the angle of the stone side and how high that, that bezel wire needs to be so they can actually hug the stone to the back plate. Now, uh, sometimes I like to roll my own bezel wire out of uh, basically a piece of 9.9 silver. I'll use my bolt cutters and cut a piece like this and I'll roll it to my rolling mill until it ends up looking something like this. And this right here is I think uh, about 24 four gauge maybe a little between 24 26 gauge maybe very thin and uh fine silver great for bezel but sometimes i like to make it a little thicker and that's what i did right here friends you can see how thick that is uh, this is probably more like 22 gauge and uh, i want i want to work with 22 gauge for this stone that i got from johnny johnny escondido Hi, Johnny. This is going to be the back plate, and this is the stone that it's going to sit on. And this is the pendant idea that I'm working on. This is three-quarter pour. Watch this video right here. I discussed the three-quarter pour uh, in detail, I think, in that video. But uh, see these angles? These are awesome angles. This is very well lapidaried. Uh, all of the, the flat parts are equal in distance. That's equal to that, which is equal to that. So it's very uniform as far as uh, the lapidary work on it. So it's going to be easy to work with on that regard, but it's going to be difficult to work with because we have these sharp, sharp, sharp points. Now, what I did was I already kind of mocked this up. This is very thick. And uh, what I did was I just put my needle nose or these uh, double round pliers like that. And then I kind of hit it with my mallet down so that it would get as much as possible of a of an angle so that I could get around this stone let's look at this close friends right there but you know look at that right there guys you know that's going to be a problem see this this right here where I'm po pointing you know that's going to be a problem it's going to look like a taco bowl you know when you get a taco bowl and it has like the 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 edges around the bowl are kind of crinkled in it's going to look like that if I try to set that like that so we're going to have to figure it out. And I think what I'm going to do is, is saw in down, make a little lip down to, to get rid of this uh, material that's not going to want to fold over because it will taco bowl on us. So that's kind of, I've seen it before and you guys may have seen it too. On certain stones, they have a kind of recess down and I have done that before with thin wire, but I'm going to try it with thick wire and we're going to not uh, castellate this. We're just going to keep this really solid because I want for this to be like very bold, especially considering that we have this really awesome three quarter pour back plate that I made. Uh, it's very thick. It's over 18 gauge. And this is going to be, it's just going to be big. It's going to be bossy. It's going to be big. And uh, so my thoughts guys is I mark these marks here so you guys can see where I'm going to kind of recess cut down probably with the saw and probably fine tune with a file but i'm going to do all the corners kind of down like this but i'm going to leave the material right there that's kind of a, a bad example but so that it fits on the flat end of the of the stone now i don't know what i'm doing guys this is not so much a tutorial but more of an adventure because we're going to hope for the best but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kneel this because I kind of beat on it to get it to this shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kneel it so that it'll soften up a little bit. I'm going to open it up a little bit. And then we're going to try to saw saw these little things right here. And we're going to want we want it to make it look good. 
So let's just, and before I put this together, and I'll show you guys the whole process of putting this together and then mounting it on the back of this. So I'm gonna show all that in this, but we're gonna really explore how we can mitigate these corners so that they don't taco bowl on us. So welcome to the adventure, friends. Please hit like while you're here. It really helps the algorithm. And uh, thank you for all the people that are supporting the channel and we're in it to win it. Uh, you know, I'm always leaning toward moving forward, friends. We might not be new to this, but we are true to this, guys. So let's just keep it going. All right, right here, this is where I marked. I just kind of rough marked it. And I'm just going to, I did anneal it. So we're going to go ahead and open this up just a little bit, just so I can have access to it. Kind of a challenge. Really, I just broke my blade. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great way to start the morning. <laughs> Almost cut my finger there, but not. But I didn't. So right there, guys. Right here is what we're looking at. And now we have these recesses. And so I did uh, saw these little out. And uh, we kind of got it mocked up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, we got it mocked up pretty nice. It looks kind of not very good right now, but we we, we have to kind of think ahead and we're gonna, it's gonna be fine. We have to believe that. So I'm going to really just, with my files, these guys, I'm just gonna fine tune these edges here and just get it so that they look kind of all the same and a gradual, the gradual slope to the to the flat part I notice that whenever I cut these corners now I got it, it it's hugging so much tighter that now I have more overlay so that's why you want to really do these corners before you solder this together solder this together because uh, now that this is nice and tight, you're getting really tight on these corners a lot better than it was when it was big and big and bulky before when, before I cut these corners off. So uh, I think we're we're doing the right thing. We're going in the right order of operation. Uh, work with it like this before you put this together. All right, amigos. I think it's important that I show you this process. I have my this is my favorite file of all my files. I have several of them. I got these at uh, uh, Harbor Freight, very cheap. But this is the flat on one end and then half round on the other end. And you can just flip it around and use it when you need it. But what I'm doing, guys, right here is I'm really going with the flat end of the needle file right along this. Now, I have you zoomed in pretty good, so I know that I can't really move around too much on the frame because I want you guys to see this. But I'm just going to see. I'm just gradually getting this like getting this to kind of go gradual like that where it was kind of looking like a U. I want for it to kind of more be like a soft open V-ish. But what I'm doing is I'm getting that V kind of open just like that. And then the goal, friends, is this top line right here. I want this to be sloped in, beveled in. Because see how thick that that uh, bezel is? It's When it hugs over the stone, it's going to have a, a blocky top. And I don't like that top to be blocky. I like for it to be beveled in and it makes it a little bit thinner up there and it really hugs the stone very nicely. So these are the things that we're considering. Uh, we're thinking ahead and right here, I'll, I'll go through here and I'll probably just go until I'm just doing this so you guys can see what I'm saying. But right there, we're going to get a nice bevel. We're going to be exaggerated bevel. We're not going to be slight about it we're gonna do a big one so you can see where that silver is starting to kind of be nice and and when if you look at the top profile of it once we're finished this will be quite thin up the top right here we're right here see it's pretty thick you can see that's definitely 24 gauge ish and uh but by the end of it this is going to be very thin and then it's going to have the material is going to be thin and malleable to really hug this awesome 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 stone so just gonna keep working i really enjoy working on this rubber block guys because it kind of holds the, the the metal it doesn't slide around like it does on this so what i'm doing is i'm get, still continuing on the slopes back and then as 
this part right here is kind of, now I'm kind of going to bevel that in. It's just very kind of small file work. Just really getting that in so it looks good. And now this is rough because it's filed. We will sand and we will we will get this looking polished and pro. Polished and pro, guys. But right now we're shaping. And, sh and working with silver like this is a lot like sculpture. You're just kind of sculpting the silver to be right what you want it to be and that's the cool thing about the about working with metal is with, with you know patience and with the right tools and some little needle files you could really get the stuff looking just like you want it i hope that's making sense to you guys are we seeing that we're getting there what it's looking like and what that will look like and look I don't know what I'm doing, but I kind of know what I'm doing. I feel like I've done this before, probably like in my past life. All right, friends. So this is where I'm at so far. And I think I'm in a place where I can go ahead and put this back together. Now, uh, I just basically just kind of put some tension over, over under tension on this, just so that it wants to be friends. And see how that's kind of a little bit uh, stepped right there. Some, I'll do my very best with my fingers to get it just right, but one of the tips I, I do, guys, is I'll just get my flat nose pliers and I'll just give it a good squeeze. <sighs> Look at that. No more step. Now on this, I'm going to put the solder on the outside so I have access for easy cleanup. And let's go to the soldering spot and solder. Okay, friends, I am not an absolutist. I am a not an all or never, always or never type of person. But guys, when it comes to bezels, I am always hard solder. Always hard solder your bezels because you want probably medium solder when you go put the bezel to the back plate. And you want to work hard on these bezels, friends. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. Uh, I put some flux on there, Mighty Flux. It's the light, lime green stuff. Um, I'm just gonna put it right there on the, get that to bubble up really nice. Let me see. Okay, we're going underneath. So I wanna pull that solder through. I have my my pick right here, in case I need a, needs a little hand. Now that's, it's kind of a thick bezel. So it's possible that, I can't even see where the, seam is it's responding i'm feathering feathering okay i felt that good now i don't feel like i got it on that side which is kind of common where i put this where i put the fire is where the solder wants to go of course because the solder does follow the heat but uh i need to work sideways instead of like this but I'm not very bright out here guys I'm just gonna let that solder just kind of wanna become friends. We're working under. We're trying to work underneath. Move it. Move it. Get both sides of the seam hot so that the solder doesn't have to decide what side to jump onto. Because sometimes it'll do that. All right, I'll clean that up and we'll really take a closer look. Okay, friends, fresh out of the pickle, and if you look underneath. We have a nice pull of solder. We pulled the solder from the top through because we put the heat underneath. This is what the top looks like. Now, I don't mind that because I can easily clean that up. And let me just take you through that. What I would do if no one was watching. Sometimes I would go like this too, guys. Um, let's get um, just a little, little wider of a file. And just take... Now, the reason I don't put the solder on the inside, guys, is because sometimes it's hard to get it really, really, really flat. And when you want for it to hug over your stone, especially if it's a thin bezel, 
it's really going to buckle. It's, it's going to block. It's going to be blocked by a little pool of solder right there because the solder is a little bit harder than the fine silver. But here, look, at I have this great access to this outside of this bezel. This is two, four, 320 grit, I believe. And I'll go through this whole thing and really clean it up. And I don't clean it too hard right now because I'm still going to put it on the back plate. But I, want, I just want to show you guys um, what that kind of looks like at this point. Let's look right here. Let me just put keep it on the block so you guys can see nice how flat. Look how high that is. It's still pretty high. But more material than not enough. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of more material than not enough. And uh, this will hug very nicely. Like this stone will not be going anywhere if I kept it at this height. But I'm going to bring it down probably about a millimeter. Probably about a millimeter. And the way I'll do that is I'll get everything nice and flat. And I'll use my flat nose pliers right here just to get everything kind of um, just flattish. It's kind of just light squeezes. This is already pretty nice. This side was a little hairy. But then I'll just probably just get some sandpaper and just go like this, guys. Until I take about a millimeter off. Let's look. Now we're kind of back to a flatter where I kind of had beveled a little bit. Um... But that's okay because we can do that again later. But we're just going to work on this a little bit. And I'm also going to work on the bottom. Because I want both sides, to be, the bottom to be really flat. Because it's going to be on the back of the base of the plate. And uh, this is the vision, guys. And I really like the way this three-quarter melt looks kind of like this. But I'll probably trim it. And it won't look this cool. But, you know, you always, as an artist, you're thinking like, man, this little ridge right here is so cool. The way it's cracked. This little indention right here is really cool. This indention is cool. If I can keep some of that, I will. But we don't know what it's going to look like. And the angle right here just so happens that it needs to be a little bit like this, probably. So, so that we have enough material here to do our bail. Alrighty, guys, this is where I'm at. Compadres, right here. I feel like I have good material to securely hug over the stone. I, uh, you guys were probably wondering, Benny, why did you uh, not do all this before you put it on the back plate? And it's really for the access. I want to be able to get my file over here and get sanding and get everything and have access to it. So yeah, make sure that whenever you're doing your bezels, guys, that it goes through the top and from the top to the bottom. Uh, sometimes people will accidentally make their bezels where it's it, it works like this, like from the bottom, and then it works like that, but it won't come through the top, and they don't realize it until after they put it on their back plate, and then they're really struggling to get their stone in there. So make sure that you're mocking it, and you're filling it all the way through so that you're having no headaches, guys. So we're going to do this right here. I'm going to... Uh, don't mind that line right there. I, that's not very straight where I want it, because I need to have this material right here to put the bail so this is going to be like this. I'm going to put it on there, the back, uh, the bezel, and then we will uh, start cleaning around it and seeing what of this we can salvage. Some of this cool three-quarter melt texture we can salvage. And uh, yeah, so but before I do that, I think I'm going to boom the back. Boom. Because you can't really do that when this is on. Well, you can, but that's a different video, a different technique. I think I've shown that in one of my shorts. But uh, yeah. Let's uh, take this to the soldering block and get this ready to go. Okay, friends, we are in the moment to own it, and this is where I'm at. We are going to put this on here. I sanded the bottom pretty good, pretty dang good, guys. I'm not perfect. I know you guys all think I'm probably perfect, but I'm not perfect. Looking, looking, looking. Uh, right there would be nice and if i can get this right here let me tell you what i'm thinking i'm trying to get this to be part of it and i'm trying to get this right here to be a little bit part of it so is my hair in the way guys i hate when my hair gets in the way and wild stallion hair okay let's get this we want this tip to be also right in this area so we're working we're looking at as much 
as we can so we can utilize some of these textures on these edges. <sighs> you don't use your flux for a few days and in the hot in the hotness in the heat of the night i hear the wolf howl honey sniffing around your door all right guys we're here let's go we're gonna actually before i do that let's just kind of make sure that we got everything where we want it we believe in ourselves lighting this up guys we're gonna go medium solder but before i put any solder on this we're gonna go ahead and Actually, I need to realign that tip right there. Looking good. Now, how do we do this and be successful? Let me show you. What I like to do is press as the as the flux is cooking flux is cooking it will give it a superficial bond so that bezel will be down and it's not perfectly down it's not down here at this point right here but i'll address that in due time i'm going to shut up and put this uh, solder on here okay now we're going to get our solder pick our solder pick and just press it very nicely against the wall and the floor right in the corner because so if it's just touching the floor it'll just flow flow along the floor and if you just have it just on the wall it's going to just flow up the wall because the bezel is lighter mass and it will conduct the heat faster so without further ado let's get let's go to let's go to town guys let's go to town go get supplies Let's go to town, friends. We're going kind of warm heat, good heat. Get everything toasty. I got my tools here. I got my solder pick and I have my tweezers. We did flux with Mighty Flux. Medium solder. Solder for my European friends out there. What's up, Europe? UK, France, Italy. We have viewers from all over the world. 54% of our viewers are in the United States. So we have a lot of viewers. Almost half of our viewers are from overseas. Or Mexico. We got some, some people in Mexico. Okay, guys. I always put a, 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 a pallion of solder right at the base of the seam. I think it's because of this bezel so thick. All right, I got it, I got it. That was kind of gnarly. Okay, we got a nice right there. It's going around, we're looking. Right here in the corner. See if it wants to be friends. Okay, we got that, I believe. No, no, not quite. I think we did right there. Just working it, working it. I'm going to touch the bezel seam with the pick as a heat draw, just for safety. Okay, that went nice. Okay, that went nice. I think we're good right here. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I think that's as easy as that, guys. And sometimes, I mean, right now my eyeballs feel like they do want to fall like into the back of my glasses, but it's because I'm focused so hard I forget to blink. 
Okay, let's look at that. Looks good, guys. Looks good to me. Look at that meniscus right there along. That's what we're looking for right there on the top. You guys are looking at this at the same time I'm looking at it. I think we're in the money. All right, guys. Let's uh, put this in the pickle. We'll really take a closer look at it. And then we'll start thinking about sawing around the edges. And we can maintain some of these cool textures. Okay, you jewelry party animals. We are here. I just pulled it out of the pickle. I'm going to think about the hook for the for the bale. And then I'm going to think about this, guys. How much of a border do I want on this so that we can still have some of this texture? It just happens to be like that, guys. And that's what it is. We're not going to shy away from the facts, friends. You know, if, I don't know if... Okay, guys. So let's uh, drill this bale out. We're going to start with right here. A little lead hole for our drill bit so it doesn't skip around and scratch everything around it on. And then I'm going to drill that hole and then we're going to get the saw out and we're going to start cleaning this up and shaping it for what it's going to be. And then we'll think about a bale. All right, Kamikaze Pilots right here. We are, uh, I'm going number three saw blade with my uh, new concept saw. And we're just gonna, because this is kind of thick, let's, let's see for the, for the, for the gram. Let's put it on there for the gram. What thickness is this? It's bigger than 20 gauge, but smaller than 18 gauge. 19 gauge. Okay, friends, this is where we are. I was able to salvage this uh, crack in here, some of this texture right here, and I don't think it looks too odd. I mean, I wish it was a little bit bigger right there, but uh, the way that it swoops and the way it's gonna hang, I think it's gonna be so, so BA, guys, so BA. So this is pretty much it. I'm gonna work on the bail. We're gonna do a bail. I'm gonna think about it. All right, friends, right here, this is a three quarter mount. I uh, rolled it out. You can see there's texture. Uh, slivering there's where there's siv slivering there's going to be texture so we're going to go ahead and just let that be for now we're going to bend it and let it do what it do then we're going to kind of start pulling on it i think we're going to bend it from the inside because i think once if this can separate nicely with it that will be the exposed part of the exposed part of the bale and when we polish and then it's exposed that inside texture of the peeling of the silver when it's exposed, it just looks so good. Okay, did a quick annealing. I want this fold over point to be about right here. Right where I feel like that's gonna spread apart and it just happens to be in, the, in a good spot. So let's get this like this and let's get this kind of pokey towards the bottom or pointy, pointy towards the bottom. And what I do sometimes, guys, is I'll just go right here This is about, see, we got some really beautiful texture right here and some really beautiful texture right here. And you guys will see. Okay. Kind of big. Let's go big right here, guys, because I think we have it. And right here on this, I'm just going to just give it the old Benderuski straight down. And sometimes it's thick right there and it doesn't really want to. Sometimes here I'll go. Look at this. You guys see this? Peel this back. Just peel it off. I just peeled off. But that easy, guys. That simple. And what side do you think should be the front? That side or that side? <sighs> My instincts say this side. Is that going to work out good for us to put our bezel, our bale? Now, what I do sometimes is I'll skinny up this back side so it'll fit through so that they can come together. But I might need to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to bore this out a little bit. I should have sanded this before I bent it. But I think we have enough material there. We're going to close this. And what I do is I take the little ends here. And I just kind of bring them in. Oops. Bring them in. Bring it in. Make sure they meet up nice. I'll open these up just a little bit so I can get my... 
a flat file in there. Once they're kissing, they have a nice flat spot to kiss, then we know that the solder's gonna run right in there and it's gonna give it a nice bond. Hanging in there, friends, hanging in there right here. Got it prepared. Now, if you just look, let me just show you real quick. It's gonna pinch together nicely. Boom. And sometimes you have to figure out how you're gonna prop it up. And I like to prop it up sometimes like, sometimes like this, possible. I don't know. All right, guys, I know it doesn't look very pretty right now, but bear with me, have vision. I did flux. I'm going to pick solder this. Um, let's go right here. Okay, we're gonna put that on there. We're gonna reduce this just a little bit. Put down our pick, pick up our tweezers. Man, that is ugly. That overlap, there's a little of like an overlap, overhang. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna have to pull that apart, friends. It's not very often we fail like that, but let's take a look and see if we did. It's whack. Look at that. Let's be real here, guys. Super whack. That's what you don't do. <sighs> Dang, that's terrible. Okay, we're landing this jumbo jet right here, friends, and let's just take a look. There's the bale that I just did, and uh, it's not the prettiest, but I was like looking at it, and I was looking at the side, the way it's soldered. It's together, it's not coming apart, and it kind of looks cool. It kind of looks like the a continuation of this down here. Because sometimes I have all this rustic right here, and then this is super like filed smooth, that it looks almost like it doesn't go. And that looks, so sometimes happy mistakes happen, and they're happy mistakes. So guys, this is where we're at right here, friends. Uh, I, I can fit this probably in there, but I don't want to yet, because I have some, clean up and some polishing but boom friends look that's what it's gonna look like <sighs> yikes jeez like zoic scoob okay right there friends let's not drop that so uh stick around for the music video debut of this piece uh shout out to uh johnny escondido for hooking me up with this awesome awesome stone put it in there I think I tell what it is in the beginning. I don't know what it is, but Johnny's going to email me and remind me exactly what it's called because I don't want to call it the wrong thing. But, dude, there's just so much depth in that, and it is really, really cool. So, guys, please subscribe. Uh, hit like on the way out. Thank you for all the people that are supporting the channel through Buy Me A Coffees and Super Thanks. I got my first Super Thanks the other day, and uh, that was really encouraging, guys. So yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, you know what it is. I'll see you guys next time. Come back and join us for another adventure or maybe a quick tip. I'm out. Peace.